case called timeout right before they made a play. Why, what was the reasoning to, to call timeout there as opposed to maybe holding it? I don't what, just want to get your take on that. Yeah. Um, I was hoping to get into I had two timeouts left, and I was going to use them after second and third down to um, get the ball back right. with about 30, 35 seconds to go in the game after after the field goal attempt. But when they ran the quarterback draw, and made the first down on, on third down, um, you know, knew that that wasn't going to be a, an option anymore. That was, that was the intent. We're trying to get the ball back for less. Coach, over here on the left, Larry. Um, for the seniors, it'll be their last home game. Can mm -hmm. you just reflect on what this class has meant to you this program and, and what that's like playing your last game at uh, Michigan Stadium? Yeah, it's uh, it's it's different. Um, remember uh, remember it pretty well. Um, but this, this class has meant so much uh, to me personally, to Michigan football, to all of us. Uh, you know, I, I look at these guys. I mean, it's the direction of the program was going a certain way, almost like a locomotive. And you know, these these upperclassmen, these seniors, um, and the guys guys last year who played as well. I mean, it meant a lot to get it stopped. You know, to get the momentum stopped, uh, like stopping a freight train. Uh, but you, I credit them uh, for not only getting it stopped, but even harder getting it turned on the tracks and headed headed the other direction. We're gonna go with a couple more questions. Start in the middle there, Adam. <clears throat> going back to what you were saying about Indiana's defense, would you say they have more variations on their two deep and single high coverages than what you saw from the defense last year? Uh -huh. Oh, from last year? Uh, yes. Yes, I think so. It's a lot. This is as much as as much as you're gonna see in college football. Up here to Wojo, right? Jim, when you haven't lost all year and then you lose a game, tight game like this, do you have to do any uplifting of your team, rebuilding, and let them know it's not over, not that bad? Does any of that have to go on at this stage? Uh, yeah, we have to. Yeah, you have to soldier up. Um, that's what's taking place. Prepare for the, uh, the championship game. Prepare for a uh, big ball game. Over on the far right, Ryan. Hey, Coach, going back to being the last home game, can you reflect on your senior class and what they have done for this program? I know they've got some more games, but this is their final home game. What they've done in your program, turning things around, and just everything in the last two years uh, in the culmination you're playing the last game at home. Yeah, as, as I said earlier, that's, uh, that's the thing that stands out in my mind the most, uh, and I give a great share of the credit to, uh, to this, the guys that are playing in there, you know, the senior class and the fifth year class, and guys that were in the in the program last year that were playing uh, uh, as a as a greatest share of uh, stopping the stopping the momentum, turning it in a, in a different direction. It's it's very hard to do, and, uh, and they deserve a lot of credit for that. All right, last question in the front. <coughs> How much discussion do you have with the players or the team as a whole about the rankings and kind of your scenarios in terms of the Big Ten and, and the wider view after the loss? Um, the same. I mean, it takes very little time to see. You know what you know what they are, and uh, um, you know onward to. You know what they are, but do you tell them? And, and I think they know. I think okay. if you probably asked them, most of them would know. Okay. You know it's accessible. So, not to answer your question, not a not a. Deep, Nothing long conversation necessary. Thanks, Coach. Okay, thanks.